any sister? This is on behalf of a non-Muslim sister. Yes, that would be the last question of the day, please. Her question is, what is the major difference between Prophet Jesus and Prophet Muhammad? If Prophet Jesus teaches people how to live life and worship God, the same thing is taught by Prophet Muhammad. Those who are following Jesus, are they correct? Or should they follow the instructions of Prophet Muhammad? Because Prophet Jesus may come again on this earth, so he could be the last prophet. This is asked a very good question. She asked the question, what is the difference between Prophet Jesus and Prophet Muhammad? If both of them taught good things to worship the same God, what is the difference? Who should we follow? And Prophet Jesus is going to come again, so he will be the last prophet. As far as the question is concerned, that amongst all the prophets, five prophets are considered, according to the Hadith, as great prophets. Prophet Abraham, Prophet Nuh al -Salam, Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So we consider Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as one of the mightiest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before I answer the question, I'll tell you one thing, that no Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Christians and the Muslims, we are going together. You may ask, where is the parting of ways? The parting of ways is that many Christians, they say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity. In fact, if you read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. If any Christian can point out any verse of the Bible, any unequivocal statement, any unambiguous statement from the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. In fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I with the finger of God cast out devils. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20, I with the spirit of God cast out devils. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. Anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God, he's a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a Muslim. He never claimed divinity. It's clearly mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 24. He said that the words that you hear are not mine, but my Father's who has sent me. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 70, verse number 3. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, This is life eternal, so that you may know there is one God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. It's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. Ye men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by him, and you are witness to it. A man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by men, you have witnessed to it. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was one of the mightiest messengers of God, but he was not God. And if you want to follow him, as I mentioned earlier, in Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, he said, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. That means, if you are a true follower of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, besides believing in one God, you also have to follow the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. As far as the last question is concerned, that he will come again. So isn't he the last prophet? It's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 116, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he bear witness, I never said, worship me, but I said, Mudullah, worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbukum, who's my Lord and your Lord. So he will come in the second coming. Why? He is the only messenger of God whose followers as a whole mistook that he claimed divinity. All the other messengers, none of their followers mistook 
that they claim divinity. Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is the only messenger whose followers had a misunderstanding that he claimed divinity. That's the reason in his second coming, he will come as a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He will not bring any new teaching. He will come to testify that he never claimed divinity. He will not bring any new message. The message is complete. Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 3, This day have we perfected our religion for you, and I have chosen for you Islam, and I have completed my favor on you. So nothing new can be added or subtracted from Islam. Isa alayhi salam in his second coming, he will come to testify to the Christians. He never said, worship me, but Abdullah, worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbakum, who is my Lord and your Lord. So he will come as an Ummat of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to clarify the misconception among the Christians. Hope that answers the question. Wa akhra dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah Dr. Zakir. We apologize for those who didn't get a chance. Inshallah, this session will continue tomorrow so much so that we'll have no lecture of Dr. Zakir. Your challenging questions can be asked in an exclusive open question answer session called Ask Dr. Zakir. Inshallah, it will start with the Kirat by Sheikh Salah Al Budair, Imam Masjid Al Nabi. Tomorrow, same place, same open ground, 6:20 p.m. Before that, of course, we will have the morning sessions too, as per the program schedule. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi jazakumullah khairan.